And the title of my message today is How to Argue Well. And, uh, and because so many times around the holidays, I hear stories of people getting together over Thanksgiving and somebody getting into an argument over something. It's kind of a big joke. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it could be politics, it could be whatever, religion, um, you know, and that's usually something you have to like watch because you're getting around family, you're getting around friends. But the other thing that has happened in America is that uh, in our media and our culture, there's just a whole lot more arguing that goes on. And, and one of the things that really disturbs me is I see these videos of people going to doing like the protest that, for like prayer, for life, and then someone will just get in their face and they'll just be yelling at them. And you can see it. They'll be waving their arms and yelling at them like this. You know, and just, and just like yelling at them. Like, like it, to me, that's just, it's really sick. It's really sick to see that. So we're seeing a lot of... Um, and there's certain shows that actually made themselves famous by the people arguing with each other, and I don't even watch them, because it's just not, it's not edifying. So I was thinking, like, t you know what? We need to teach our church people, number one, don't be wimps. In other words, don't, don't, don't not say the truth. Don't be intimidated. On the other hand, don't be a jerk when you explain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't, don't be like the world, like, like some of these protesters do. And, and so, like, how do you, how do you persuade people? How do you convince people? You know, um, that's one of the things that we see happen, where you've got this, this, this. You want people to change, and you want people to to hear the good news. And Paul says he he persuades. That word persuade is a good thing, okay? It means there are times when you need to, t you know, God wants to give the ability to persuade someone without being a jerk about it, okay? And, and what does that look like, and how can we get there, okay? So I'm going to pray that God will give me the grace to impart the Holy Spirit's wisdom on that today because, like I said, you can... Actually, you know, people can get worse if you're not ministering in the Lord. And sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. So how to argue well. And we're going to just look at these three verses in the passage. And I believe the truth is right in these three verses. So we're going to go from here. And Steve, this is a message I think that you're going to preach one day. And you'll see why later on. Okay. All right. So I'm reading in the ESV. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what's mine and declare it to you all that the father has is mine therefore i said that he the holy spirit right will take what is mine and declare it to you okay so lord give us understanding in this passage today holy spirit minister to us and impart to us and give us the truth all right, so the first thing that Jesus says, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't carry them. You cannot carry them. So the, thing, the first thing we have to see here is that truth has weight to it. Truth has substance to it. Truth is not just a thing that is like a, a, a wisp or a, you know, it's got something about it that you have to carry and you have to carry, you have to think about this, that there's some truth that you can't handle right now. Sometimes you have to be willing to receive what God has for you now in order for the truth, the more truth to come. And we have to determine 
if the person, this is the most, one of the, I think one of the most key things when you're talking to someone about the Lord or you're arguing with them, if you will, you need to know, can they carry the truth if they got it? Could they even receive what you've got to say? Where are they in the spectrum of truth? Can they bear it? Some people will not receive what you have to say simply because it is not their age group. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they need a shape box. They don't need a PS4 or whatever the new PS is. They just can't handle that truth. They're not ready for it. And what you have to ask the Holy Spirit to show you is, is what truth can they carry? And then be happy with sharing that. Why argue? And I want to, I'll give another illustration. When I was a, a child growing up, my father was very smart about math and science, okay? He understood, I mean, he understood things that I still don't ever understand. And, and so having somebody like that who's an engineer who understands radar, who understands how things work in mathematics, and you're trying to get help on a seventh grade math project, sometimes dad would just get carried away. And so instead of just explaining that, you know what I'm saying, basic algebra, or ba he's giving me like advanced calculus, oh, by the way, this, 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 and this, and my brain starts going, you can see the smoke coming up. <laughs> does not, too much current going through. And I would just laugh because that's just, he just had so much of that in him, it just would come out. And he was always used to talking to geeks all day. And they talk about stuff like that. To them, you know, Einstein's theory, it's, to him, that's relaxing reading. You know what I'm saying? Scientific American. So I'm like, I, bzz, 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 and that's okay. That's that. You see what I'm saying? So, so we need to, to have a, a sense of Holy Spirit, what do you want them to carry? What can they carry? Because I don't want to worry about it too much. People will resist uncertainty. If they don't get something, they're going to fight you. Because they're not really sure what you're talking about. Does that make sense? If they don't get it, they're going to fight you. Like, why are you asking me to be this way? And I don't get why you want me to be this way. Why should I live a godly life? Why should I not just sleep around? Or why should I not just do what I feel like? Why should I take time to go to church on Sunday? They don't have a clue. So they're going to resist you on that. They will. Or why is it wrong to kill a baby in the womb? They won't get it. So they'll fight you because they don't get it. Now, so now we're going to break down the actual scripture. We're going to look at it. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now, when the spirit of truth comes, when the spirit of truth comes, when you see the term spirit of truth, that is a Jewish way of saying truth spirit. So the Jewish way or the Hebrew way to say Holy Spirit is spirit of holiness. We say Holy Spirit. Got it? So when John says spirit of truth, what he's saying is the truth spirit, truth spirit. Now, why do we say Holy Spirit? Up till now, all we hear about the spirit of God is spirit of God is the God spirit. Holy Spirit is the spirit that is holy. That means unique. There's nothing else, nothing like it. God says I am holy, therefore you will be holy 
because I am holy. I'm unique. I'm special. I'm a one of a kind. And I'm, I'm holy in terms of being pure. So that's the spirit of holiness, the Jewish way to say it. So the truth spirit is the spirit that is truth. It's the spirit that gives you truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the, come on now, I am the truth. I am. It's me. And the truth spirit is is everything that God is. There is no truth outside of God. Amen. There's no truth outside of God. You, you can't get any. I mean, he gives truth to people whether they know it or not. But it comes from him. He is the truth. Just as much as he's the holy. He's the pure. He's the righteous. And so we have this truth spirit. Spirit of truth. He always was understood as the spirit of holiness. Now Jesus comes and says, the spirit of truth. Lord, we need to receive the truth spirit just as much as we receive the Holy Spirit. It's just as important. Can't be holy if you don't have truth. Amen. Okay. Now, he guides us into tr all truth. Now, all truth is God. So he is guiding us. The Holy Spirit doesn't just teach us, but he walks with us in the way or the road of truth. So truth is like getting on the right road to go to the right place. So truth is more of an attitude. Truth is more of a way or a practice or an atmosphere. Truth is not so much a thing or a point. Like, let me make this point. Agree with me on this point. Truth, a lot of times, it has to do with the, the way you do something and the attitude. And so when you're arguing... Your attitude is very important. And the attitude of someone else is very important. If there is an attitude of truth or a way of truth, then people are going to listen to you. But if you have a bad attitude and you're trying to tell somebody, just get saved in Jesus. You know what I mean? And they're like preaching, you just got, you're going to hell. Well, it's true. People quote, but it's not truth because the attitude is bad. It's the way of truth. It's, it's, there's an attitude that when something really right comes, there's a beauty to it. There's a sweetness to it. There's a, there's a, a, a loveliness to it. There is a a reasonableness to it. It just makes sense. Oh, yes. And people want it because it's, yeah, yes, this is it. Yeah, I get it. But people can throw religious things at others with a really bad attitude. It says that he, and you got that scripture up there? He will not speak on his own authority. He will not speak on his own authority. Now, the word authority is not there. That's the translator. He puts that in there. And what he says is this. It, this is the literal thing. So I'm going to give you the John Heiss version. J-H-V. The J-H-V. Here we go. He's not speaking out of himself. It's not coming from in him. This is not just his opinion. This See, truth has a source. And who is that source? It's the Father. It's God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way. I'm the attitude. I'm the truth. I'm the substance of what God is all about. I'm the life. You're going to be prospering because of this, because you have life. 
And we need to have this sense that we're not speaking out of ourself. We as Christians have to know when we're speaking out of ourselves or when we're speaking because we've heard the Holy Spirit speak to us. Is it this me speaking or is this the Lord speaking? Am I speaking out of God and in his wisdom, out of his truth? Am I speaking based on what the Lord is saying or am I just talking? And there are times when the Holy Spirit has to convince me, John, shut your mouth. You're running your mouth. Turn it off. Reset. You know what I mean? Hit the reset button. Hit the reset button. Because it ain't running run the way it should. So shut it off, reset it, and start it over. So that you can really hear from God. And it's amazing, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, it doesn't matter how much you walk with God or how experienced you are or what position you have, you're just as capable of speaking out of yourself at any time if you don't pay attention. And I know in my experience, that's one of the hardest things you have to learn because somebody you might really respect and who you've seen God use really mightily and powerfully and really like how could they ever say this but then you hear something come out of their mouth and you're like oh my goodness this is not God but I respect them so much and I love them so much and I'm going to have to like no they had their moment and you got to love them you love them but it doesn't mean you take everything they say because they may not be speaking from the Holy Spirit. Jesus says there's a better way. And I love the when God puts but. It says, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak from himself, but. But whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak. So the Holy Spirit has to listen before he talks. Yes. He's not asking us to do something that he don't do himself. The Holy Spirit is, okay, Father, what do you want to say through Jesus? Jesus talks to him. Jesus says, I'm speaking what the Father wants. Holy Spirit says, okay, it's time for me to talk. I got to say something. So the Holy Spirit is dependent on what he hears before he speaks. Now, if that's good enough for the Holy Spirit, it's good enough for me. Amen. Come on, wave your hand. Amen, Holy Spirit. It's good enough for me. If you got to hear before you speak, I got to hear before I speak. Come on, say it. If you got to hear before you speak, I got to hear before I speak. Glory to God. Glory to God. Speak, Lord, because I want to speak. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Yay, yay. Whatever, hearing, speaking. And what happens to me too many times, I'm hearing myself talk before I hear Holy Spirit talk. Now, here's what I want you to see here too. All right, it says, what he hears, he speaks and declares. So what you're going from, here's the progression, everybody. Hearing, speaking, declaring. Let's all say it. Ready? Hearing, speaking, declaring. You're beginning to speak as a messenger and not just a talker. And you want to speak as the oracles of God. The Bible calls it the oracles of God. And there's a declaration. When you make a declaration, there's a sense of authority to what you're saying. It's not just you talking your la-las. God deliver us from la-las. La -la yeah, la-la land. Because <laughs> when you hear before you la-la, your la-la becomes a message from the Lord. Come on, praise God. Yes, yes. So I call it 
the Trinity of Revelation. I, I've never heard anybody speak. Uh, we, need to tra- we need to trademark this, right, Ronnie? You've got to get that trademark. The Trinity of Revelation. Because it says that what, and look at this. It's right here at the end of the verse. Keep going to the next verse. It says, you now I want to get this. Isn't there another verse? 15. Let me see 15. That's okay. I want to hit this here. Here we go. The Trinity of Revelation. All the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that Holy Spirit will take what is mine. So you've got the Father has, Father has truth. The Son has truth. And the Holy Spirit takes the truth and does what? Declares it. He doesn't la la to it. He declares the truth to you. So when the Holy Spirit gives you truth, he gives you powerful, authoritative words that don't arise from himself. But they actually are a trinity or a threefold cord or in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Now, it could have come out of one person's mouth. But when you speak, it has two or three witnesses to what you say. That's the weight in it. I may be saying it with my mouth, but Holy Spirit is taking the hammer of God and knocking you on the side of the head with these words. And that's what you want. Because you're going, wait a minute, I sense the Holy Spirit in this right now. I'm getting it. Praise God. Trinity of Revelation. Now, this is where Steve comes in on this verse. How do you like this? You ready, Steve? This is going to be a message Steve's going to preach. Here's the analogy. The Father God is like a library. Now, in the center, I'm serious. Now, I'm going to tell you what it is. Now, watch. This is going to be the library message. Okay? Now, in every college, the center of the real good schools has always been and hopefully always will be the library. In our little college, the center of our school was the library. So the dormitories were set up because that's where you spent, hopefully, the most time. You had to go to the library because your professor said, go to the library and get these books out, get this research done to get your work done. So the library was the heart and soul of the educational process. The other important places, obviously, was, were the, 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 the place where you ate, the dining hall, very important place, right? And for us in the music place was always the practice rooms, okay? So, but our, they were kind of scattered about. So really, it was the library, not the classrooms, that was the center of the university. And likewise, the Father God is the library. He says, all that is in truth is in him. Where are all the books? In the library. All the books are there. If you want to find a book about anything, Where do you go? You go to the library. Now, where we went to school in New Jersey, Princeton Seminary was the largest seminary library in the world. The theological library. They had more books about God in that place than anywhere in the world. The library is the Father. Right? All that the Father holds is mine. So really, the Father's the librarian, Jesus is the database, and the Holy Spirit is the librarian. He's the one who takes what's there, because you'd have to go to the librarian, the librarian you made friends with. If you're, if you're a student and your professor says, I want you to get, and I would go to the library, and people would come out of the library with stacks and stacks of books, but you're, the librarian was always going to be your best friend. Well, I married one, by the way. But anyway... Because they're the ones who helped you get the right kind of book for what you needed. 
Because there were so many there. You walked in. I mean, come on, think about it. You walk in the library, your professor wants you to do some research, and you look, and what do you see? Books everywhere. Stacks everywhere. Floors in some places of books. Nothing but books. And then you see this little place with a, well, back in the old days, a card catalog, today computers, right? Where you have to figure out how to find the truth that you need for where you're at, the truth that you can carry. And the Holy Spirit knows what book, what truth that you need so that you can carry out your life to prosper in God. Let's look. I'm going to give you five things, and then we're going to, we're going to go. To have a good argument, you need to approach the argument in the right way. So when you come to a situation where you want to share truth with somebody, try to start out with a good attitude. <laughs> okay? Just start out with a good attitude. If you don't have a good attitude in the beginning, check your attitude. <laughs> it says when the Holy Spirit comes. Now, and the other thing about it, it says the Holy Spirit's like the wind. It says... You know it's moving, but you don't know where it's coming from or going. So there's a sense of knowing the Holy Spirit is doing something, but you don't quite understand it. So here's the thing. You start off with a sense or an intuition or an, uh, uh, of what God wants to do, but you don't quite understand everything yet. But you begin from that attitude of sensitivity and connecting with the Holy Spirit. And there are time and time again when the Lord would tell me, bring me to a situation, and he would want me to say something, but he doesn't tell me everything. I just sense a moving in my spirit, and I start to talk. And as I begin to talk, my talking turns into declaring. And it says that he, the second step is listening. Listening. So our attitude of approach is the first thing, the coming. The second thing is listening. Faith comes through listening. Now, we are all used to the word hearing. But you know how I say it sometimes? It's, oh, I hear you. Do I, are they really listening? When we say here, that can mean like, yeah, I heard you, but I am not paying attention. Right? But when I say listen, that means more of listening, like really listening. So how about saying faith comes by listening? We should start using that as the JHV, the John Heise version. Faith comes by listening. Faith comes by listening. And then our talking turns into confessing. I believe before declarations can come, confessions need to come. Now, what's a confession? A confession means to agree with something. So, like, if someone comes to me and says, say my wife comes to me and says, John, did you eat that last piece of, of pumpkin pie? She asked me a question. If I agree with that question, I live. I mean, if I agree with that question, <laughs> I'm confessing. Yes. So agreement means that confession means that you're speaking out loud your agreement with the word of God. And when you confess your agreement with God's word, your words take on the power of the Holy Spirit and they become declarations, not just lalas. There's power there. Wonder-working power. Amen. When you begin to speak, it, things shift and you empower your speech. Now, one of the tactics of the enemy um, in, this, in this resistance and all this kind of mess 
is they get really crazy emotional about stuff. They can't just talk to you, but they got to yell at you and shake their fist at you and point their finger at you and move around and get in your face and all this kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. But at the same time, when there's a declaration going on, there is a passion in your heart about what you're saying. You may say it with a gracious attitude, but there's still your, your heart's in it. You care. It may show up as tears while you're talking. And there are times when I'm declaring things in the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm crying when I'm saying it. Sometimes I'm declaring things in the power of the Holy Spirit, and there's an intensity, but I may not be raising my voice. But there is a power and a passion, and it makes it personal to us. So it's not just, I'm not just talking about something that's out there somewhere. It's, it, I care. And people see that. And you've heard the saying, people do not care what you know until they know that you care. They won't care what you know until they know that you care. So there has to be the love and the caring that goes along with the words. I love it. There are times in the Bible where it says that Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said. That's awesome. It was something that the, that the writer saw in Jesus, that love was coming through Jesus. Somehow, maybe he was weeping at the time he said it. But something communicated the love that was there. And when you declare it has authority. It says that, uh, let's go on to number three, listening, talking, next one, declaring, and number five, anticipating, coming again. The scripture says right there, it says that he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the coming things. He will declare to you the coming things. What's that all about? Well, it's prophecy. He's going to tell you prophetic things. Yes, he will. That means he's going to tell you what is going to happen in the future. Now, but here's, here's how I want to break it down personally. If I want to fix my car, some people will go to a website or they'll try to look it up. And I want to fix my brakes. <laughs> and I have to deal with my brakes. Or I have to deal with my transmission. One of the biggest and most important things is you want to make sure the guy knows what he's talking about. Because if he doesn't, it's not going to get fixed. You're going to go to a whole lot of trouble and things may get a whole lot worse. So when the Holy Spirit gives you truth that will give you things to come, that means that if you do what he says, you will get what he promises. If you do this, this, and this, your car will be fixed. That's the sense of authority. I know that if I'm looking up a recipe to make something a certain way and I follow those directions... I want to taste exactly what it looks like I'm supposed to taste. But if it's a lousy recipe, masquerading as a good one, I will not get to come. <laughs> it will be, not be good. The expectation will not be good. So truth gives us hope that something is going to happen that is promised. Holy Spirit says, if you do what I say, this will happen. You will not be disappointed. You will have hope. That's an expectation of something you haven't seen yet. He will give you hope and expectation for good. He will prosper you. So... 
wrap things up. What kind of things do we need to consider? Number one, I'm going to use the analogy of breathing. Everybody take a deep breath in and let it out. Okay, breathing in is listening. Breathing out is talking. Listen to God before you talk. <laughs> Just like breathing in before you breathe out. Hear. Faith comes by what? That means breathe in the word so you can breathe out the word. Amen? When you're talking to people, listen before you answer. That's just good. It's very easy sometimes for people, certain kinds of personalities, you think quick, and so your brain runs way ahead of, your, of the conversation. So you're anticipating. By nature, you're a person who anticipates well. So someone will start to say a word. For example, I am going to store to buy some. Yeah, automatically, what did you think? Milk? Bread? You see, you all anticipated what I was going to say, right? It's human nature. We start a sentence, but one of the problems that I know that I have is I try to answer the question before they totally get it out because my I anticipate what they're going to say, and I begin my answer before they even finished. Likewise, we need to understand before we speak. Make sure you understand what they're saying. So one of the things I learned that I was taught years ago was reflect back what they're saying before you answer. That's even another step. And that makes it easy for people like me, easier for people like me. So what I say to them, what they said to me first before I give the answer. It's so easy to do that. Okay, some other practical things. We are not the source of truth. We need to remind ourselves that the answer we may not know the answer until we give some time to God to listen. Because right. God may have an answer for them that wasn't an answer for us. Another thing that's practical, I think, is monitor your feelings at the time so that you're not in the bad spirit. Number one, your attitude, but also your, your sense of feeling. And if you're not feeling the peace of God, it says the peace of God guard you. It's like a gatekeeper. That means if, if the peace isn't there, the gate's shut. Don't open the gate. Let the peace of God come as you, as you speak. And if you're agitated or angry, or in some people's case, I'm not going to mention any names, not caffeinated enough, don't talk. <laughs> Just don't say anything. I am not properly caffeinated, or in my case, too caffeinated. And last but not least, understand that some people may not be able to carry the truth at the time, even if you know the truth. Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But if they can't carry that truth, and you put it in their hands and they drop it, then don't give it to them. So sometimes you have to hold your peace and not tell them what they, what they may need to know, but it's not the right time. So just hold it and uh, pray and ask God to show you what needs to be shared so they can, ca can, can carry it. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a judgment call. Um, and you do that out of love and obedience to the Lord, not out of fear of what you may say to them, because there are times when you may say to somebody something that's very difficult for them to receive. And they'll be mad at you, and you won't like the consequence. And some people will put up defenses so they don't want to hear what you've got to say. And so you have to know when to get up and walk away and just say, okay, we just can't talk. That's something that, that it's hard sometimes to do. There are times when I have stayed in a conversation 
way too long because they're just not going to hear it. And you just got to know when to say, okay, no. And we're going to get up and leave. You got to know when to stop. Because they're not receiving it and they won't receive it. And that's part of the, part of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for us that God has for us in this time. So this is my prayer. This is our prayer today. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the truth spirit. Holy Spirit, we receive the truth spirit in our lives because truth makes us free. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, truth spirit, that every Thing in the knowledge in the universe is contained in the Father, the library of all knowledge. And Jesus, you took all of those books <laughs> and made sense out of them for us, that we can access them. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the guide, the librarian to lead us to the right stack, the right book, the right place, the right author, the right location, the right words that we need so that we can carry that truth and hold that truth so that it will change us. Father, we just pray that you would change us so that we could change others. Lord, it's not all about changing us. It's also about changing others through us. Father, give us a heart of compassion for those that do not know the truth. Give us wise ways to get the gospel truth out because the lies keep increasing around us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being the spirit of truth to us. Jubilee, Jubilee, this is the year of Jubilee. Lame now walk, blind now see, this is the year of Jubilee. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed.